Video games are not just for play anymore. In fact, today's games help us keep fit and teach us incredible new skills. Today on Campus Conversations, we'll see how students at Montgomery College are learning to create those games. And we'll see how a new generation of video games is changing our minds about kids and adults who play them. Stay tuned for this edition of Campus Conversations. Welcome to Campus Conversations. I'm Fritzi Bodenheimer. And I'm Steve Simon. Today we're joined by Professor Deborah Solomon from Montgomery College's Computer Applications Department and some of the students in the Computer Gaming Program, Jen Tonin and Steve Koop. And we want to welcome all of you to Campus Conversations. Thanks Thank for you. having Thank us you. here. Deb, we want to start with you for a little bit of background on this field of computer gaming and a program that really didn't exist not even that long ago at Montgomery College. What is computer gaming and, and how, what's going on with the teaching of computer gaming at Montgomery College? Well, computer gaming has been around for a while, for at least since the 70s and commercially in the 80s. Um, but only in the last 10 years has it really burgeoned into a multi-billion dollar industry. And especially in Maryland, which is the East Coast hub of the gaming industry, or, or so it's known, with so many different gaming and simulation companies in the area, uh, we were seeing a big interest from industry and from students in having a program to teach them the skills they would need to succeed in this industry. It has to be fun because it's one of those fields that students can really see themselves because they in working in because they've been interested in these games for such a long time. Yeah, the problem with it is it's too fun, and <laughs> students who enjoy playing games at home may not realize all the hard work that goes into mm. making those games. And it's not uh, having a job in the industry is not just you know enjoying playing lots and lots of different games. It can be uh, playing one game over and over and over for hours and days and weeks testing it fixing the bugs, uh, redesigning it, retesting it. So it's not as fun as just getting to play all the games, but it is a really fun career choice for people who um, like to play games and are interested in the creative and technical aspects. And, and Steve and Jen, you go home to mom and dad and you say, Mom, Dad, I'm, I'm majoring in video games. What kind of reaction do you get from folks when you tell them about your major? We'll start with Steve and then Jen. Uh, my parents weren't that surprised. I've been <laughs> gaming my whole life. And uh, they're like, well, it makes more money than theater. <laughs> so. well, how about you, Jen? Uh, it's pretty much the same kind of boat. I've always been into the arts. And I've actually gotten my dad into video games in the past couple of years. And he's really, really into the uh, first person shooters and things like that. So he's, I mean, he's really proud of what I'm doing. And, my mom just stands by and goes, that's nice, honey. <laughs> you do that. <laughs> that's it's, it's been good. Well, what I would say to parents is parents really don't realize how huge this industry is. I mean, this industry is beginning to rival the movie business in the size and volume of sales. So it really is um, a very dynamic, um, fast-paced, and rewarding career path for students who are interested in that field. And Deb, you, I want you to tell us a little bit about the, the point we, that was made up front where we said it's not just fun and games anymore. And, we, and we've had a little fun with this in the early part of the conversation, mm -hmm. thinking of people just playing computer games. Mm -hmm. But what, what other aspects are there to the industry and, and what are the applications that we may not think about in mm -hmm. our lives? I'd love to hear from you as well as some of the students' experience mm -hmm. in some of those non-game uh, applications. Well, what's so fascinating about gaming today is that there's in almost any industry you can think of, from medicine to architecture to you know, general corporate industry, there's some game or entertainment application that's being used to educate people in that industry. So for example, in the health field, there are games to train doctors, to train nurses, mm -hmm. to train patients. There's a game to train kids how to manage their diabetes mm -hmm. using a little handheld mm -hmm. Game Boy. Um, there's games for exercise. There's just almost any industry you can think of. There is some game application that's now being used for very serious purposes to train people in those industries. So it's not just kids sitting in the basement, you know, shooting each mm -hmm. other on the video mm -hmm. screen. Mm -hmm. There's a, a, it's a much, much broader industry than people think of. And both of you said that you've been involved in arts or theater all of your life. To other students that might be interested in getting involved in this, what other skills are they going to need? They're going to have to be creative. 
Of course, but from your experience, what uh, kinds of other skills or attributes do they need to bring into the program? Um, I'd say they certainly need patience. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the number one thing you need. Uh, it's a lot of long hours, hard work, just programming it, um, creating the art. It, 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 you imagine it as simple, but it takes a lot longer. And then, of course, after you combine them all, you've got to test it, which can be a full-time job in and of itself, where they've got full crews of people testing games and uh, writing bugs that they find and then uh, testing to make sure those bugs have been fixed later on. And So patience, definitely. As well as uh, learning to play nice with your teammates. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a big thing that I think everybody runs into is that you're going to find somebody who's not going to want to do something or they don't pick up their own you know, end of the work and so you kind of have to adjust and figure out a way how to get it done and play nice with everybody so it, it gets done. I want to ask you all to tell us about a couple of things. You talk about playing nice with, with your mm -hmm. teammates. Mm -hmm. and one of the things I think is so fascinating, Deb, that I know that you do is that you don't have a, a sort of typical uh, final exam where you're going to sit around. And, and I think people probably have an image that all of this is done at the computer, but you all have had a chance to participate in, in some pretty interesting non-computer exercises where you could really kind of get a sense of how to get involved in the field of virtual reality. Why don't you tell us about uh, what the final exam might be like and how you sort of bring things to life in, in, in the field? Well, uh, for some of the classes, uh, we've done live action versions of video games. So uh, for one of the classes, it was a full life-size version of Pac-Man. So people would dress up as Pac-Man and the ghosts, and they would have to go around and munch wow. the other people. Gobble, gobble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it was all, all around uh, the Montgomery College campus. Uh, and then the other one that they did was the live version of The Legend of Zelda, mm -hmm. which was another fun project mm -hmm. where all of the kids pulled their uh, assets together to create uh, a, a game, a live action game. Really putting the, your acting skills to use. The point of, of mm -hmm. those live action mm -hmm. games is twofold. First of all, to teach the teamwork skills. They have two weeks to pull together what is a pretty large production, mm -hmm. market it, um, and to, um, to, to work together in the team to make that happen. We very heavily emphasize team building, teamwork, and in fact, students can be fired from their team just like in a, a workforce environment if they don't pull their weight. So we, we go over a lot of uh, teamwork kind of exercises. Um, the other prong of that exercise is to have the students really get inside a game and to look at the rules of the gameplay and translate it to a different platform, in this case a life-size platform, um, to really understand how does, you know, how do you translate the artificial intelligence of the ghosts turning blue when Pac-Man eats a power pill to how do you translate that in, in the real world? So they're looking at the mechanics of the game. It's not just dressing up and doing theater. It's in actually translating the rules of a digital game to a life-size game platform. 